Hello everyone, my name is Matt Garcia and you're watching MTV Cribs. That was really stupid. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I am moving into a $13 million New York City mansion and I want you to come on in and check it out. I'm gonna get a little tour going. I will, uh, I will explain why I'm here uh, in a little bit, but first we're gonna check out the house and show you what 13 mil gets you in Manhattan. First and foremost, in our entry here, we have a Steinway and Sons Baby Grand Piano. I heard this thing's like 75,000. Pretty cool. Well, I learned one song. Paul McCartney just sued you for $15 million. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to just not, you know, little cute wall here for some for some nice Instagram photos or something. Always, always be launching. You know what it is. Yeah, so there's six floors in this place. You know, it's Manhattan, so it's it's not very wide, but it's just built straight up. So we're gonna start at the top floor, work our way down. So this is the cooler of the two balconies on the roof of this place. Um, and I'm not even gonna explain why, I'm just gonna show you. Pretty cool. It's the uh, the Colosseum, the Eiffel Tower. No, that's Madison Square Garden. Yeah, so obviously nice view of the Empire State Building. Pretty awesome. Uh, we got some living space out here. Hang out with your with your homies. You know, get devious up on the roof. So you know, it's the work floor. We'll get some shots of it, show you, and then we'll move on. Somebody's on a call right now, but just so you know, there's two of these tables in here. This one right here. They're $55,000 each. It's wild. Let's move on. Work floor, pretty damn sweet. These carpets, I actually don't have enough information to probably talk about them, but I'm gonna do that anyways, because I'd love to do that. So the owner of this house is the Former CEO of Goldman Sachs, allegedly. I don't know, haven't met the dude. But um, these are, uh, were meant to be his children's floors. So he actually uh, changed the carpets. Um, and these were designed by a Japanese designer, and apparently they were like really, really expensive. So, kind of cool. variety of shower heads. You don't really need to see like the toilet bowl or anything. It's just it's a toilet. It's a toilet. Um, this is a yeah. yeah. This is the room. Uh, pretty cool. Um, you know, very comfy bed going going here. We got bunk beds for uh, my guests, which. I will explain later on, because you don't even know why I'm here. Pretty cool, leaving you on a cliffhanger. Standing desks, not bad, not bad. If you come on over here, we obviously have the, uh, I don't know, some 65 inch or something. Who knows? How, how, how big are these? It's a 65. Really? Yeah, That's you sweet. nailed it. Uh, you know, walk-in closet, something light. Uh, you know, yeah, just, just come on in to my closet this is this is pretty wild like this amount of space in New York City is nuts and I mean I guess you know that's why it comes with a high price but regardless having this much space in New York City is insane Head on down alrighty if you get tired you can just take the elevator down. it's fine do whatever you want we'll head back down to the First floor, the main floor now. I check out the living room, and then we'll hit the basement, which is really cool. So 
know, if you look over here, the stairs in this place are beautiful. It's a nice place. This is the living room, very cozy. These marble tables, it's probably not actually marble, I just refer to everything that looks like that as marble. Uh, I'm not a real estate agent, so. These couches, phenomenal, good vibes. A lot of natural sunlight coming through to the basement. Kind of quiet, little service bar here, in case, in case your butler needs somewhere to go. Nice wine fridge. Very chill living room, great environment, great vibes. These couches, super comfortable. I'm looking forward to falling asleep on them, to be honest. They just look like something that I could fall asleep on. Maybe while playing some, some Mario Kart, who knows? Is it Mario Kart or Mario Kart? Leave a comment down below. Come over here, we got the kitchen. Pretty much everything you need here. Not really much to say. I, mean, I don't. I don't really use kitchens an awful lot, but it looks like a nice one. Everyone say hi, Jamie. What up, baby? Yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, this is the backyard. A lot of people who aren't from New York City might look at this and be like, "You're an idiot. That's not a backyard. What the heck are you talking about?" Um, so this is actually a massive backyard when it comes to New York City. A lot of people pay 13 million dollars and don't even have this, so this is pretty wild. Edison bulbs adding to the vibes. We should get a vibe counter. How many times did I say vibes? Here we obviously have a barbecue. Pretty cool. We got a waterfall over here and the backdrop will probably kind of be a tell that I didn't buy this place. Um, if you think I have $13 million to spend on, on a house, then uh, you're probably uh, minorly delusional, because, I mean, you know, the money's good, but it's, it's not this good, you know what I mean? Like, this is crazy. That is, that is basically uh, the house. Now we're gonna move on to talking about why I'm here, what I'm doing here in beautiful New York City, the greatest city in the world, by the way, in case you didn't know. So, transition, let's do that. <laughs> All right, everyone, so I am with my boy Jamie here and he's currently running this house here in New York City, and he's going to quickly, briefly, explain what Launch House does. Definitely the story. So basically, a year ago, three friends rented this house down in Tulum, Mexico, for a month, and they invited all their founder friends with them. So the 20 of them worked and lived together over the course of 30 days, built companies, had a great time, and when the their stay was ending, they realized, like, shit, like, we don't want this time to end. So they ended up renting this house in Beverly Hills. It used to be on my Paris Hilton and started running these 30-day programs out of LA. The program itself is designed to be like a hack house for founders and creators. We run some light programming, but the main idea is like giving founders the free time to be able to build and be surrounded by other people that are going through the same journey as them. So just this past summer, the company raised a little bit of capital, which enabled them to open this house in New York, which is where Matt and I have been for the last 30 days. Uh, it's been an amazing time. Just met some really great people. I don't know, just incredibly grateful for this opportunity. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, we've spoken about this a lot. Just the idea of having a bunch of like-minded people together, just locked in in one place, sort of just like breeds innovation mm. and motivation. I think there's something really special about bringing founders and creators together, which this is actually, of the 10 cohorts that we've run over the last year, like this is truly the first time that we've had a creator in residence program that we've brought founders and creators together in the same kind of physical space. And like, I love this phrase, like I, I sometimes say this to people, like I think some of the best founders of this next decade will think like creators some of the best creators will think like founders and all of them like know and understand like how difficult the journey is alone but I think a lot of people are discovering how different the journey can be and how powerful it can be to be surrounded by a bunch of our peers who are like going through the same thing as us and we have a lot of the same pain points too right so it's like I think everyone has really been able to like understand each other and everyone respects each other because it's like in some capacity we're all entrepreneurs like like we all have to or had to at some point deal with worrying about, okay, how am I gonna monetize this thing I love? Which is a terribly scary thing. And just like the grind, right? Like you don't have to, not to be corny, but like you don't have anyone telling you to wake up in the morning and start working or, or, and you don't clock out at the end of the day. It's like 24 yeah. seven. So I think anyone who does that, whether you are a traditional entrepreneur, creator of some sort, even if the, if that's like an influencer or a music artist or a more traditional artist, we all have the same problems. 
Yeah. And I think having the same problems with people really like draws mm. draws them together. I think if there's one thing that I learned over the last like couple weeks, it's like everyone's looking for freedom of time that comes through our doors. And if you're building a business or if you're a creator, if you're something like, I think a lot of people think, hope, and know that there is this hurdle uh, that everyone's like trying to get over. And once you get it, like you're gonna have more freedom of time, more financial freedom yourself, and like the ability to just like monetize your life and your lifestyle and your personal business and your personal monopoly like any way that you want. That's a really important point because a lot of us share that same value of like, you could always make money back, but you could never make time back. And so mm. I think a lot of us value our time a lot. Cause like mm. you said, the idea is to hopefully one day like not have to be committed to something as far as time goes. and like be able to do whatever you want with your time like if, mm. if you want to go to launch house in la tomorrow you could do that right appreciate you talking about launch house dude thank you thank you yes. for having me man this is this is not a paid advertisement but launch house is incredible dude. so link down below if any of this sounded interesting to you if if this is how you live your life i would definitely recommend it it's it's a super special experience so don't mess this up link in bio Damn, dude. or description sorry jeez <laughs> Thank you.